The Sharp MD SS503 is an AV 1 bit player that came in multiple colors with color coordinated remote backlights. This nice blue example came with a dock and remote, but wasn't working. Let's see what's going on. Normally, I have a lot of background noise, so I dub over, but I do want to include some sound clips so you can hear what it sounded like. That's not good. I've heard enough broken gears and sharps to know one when I hear one. You can see the sled didn't even move to the home position. Well, let's get ready to open it up. This lid has just three screws and one tab. If it's too tight, we may remove the bottom case for some wiggle room. Just two screws on this model since there are more inside the tray. Now for the battery door. A little prying on this side should do it. There, it's free from the tab. Here's another look at the laser sled. It didn't move at all, so probably a broken gear. Some internal screws need to be removed so we can take off the bottom case. This one is for the eject slider mechanism. This tray is held by two small tabs. Just squeeze the tray gently to remove. Two more screws in the corners. And now we should be able to remove the bottom case. Now 
nice and clean inside. A bit of cleaning here so we don't get dust into the lens or mechanisms. Just one screw here on the board. One here on the side. And one at the bottom by the charging contacts. Let's see what's under this tape. Looks like it's just there to help direct the LED light. Nothing interesting here. Okay, let's remove this flex cable and get deeper. It's loose. We need to work it from under these tabs and the negative terminal. Oops, that plastic piece was on the negative terminal. We'll fix that. Lift gently. There's another flex cable underneath. As usual, loosen the two tabs. Okay, so here we are, on the rear of the sled and motor gears. To get to the gear, we'll need to remove that tiny collar and flat gear. It's always a good idea to put a finger or tape on. Maybe I need the finer tip tweezers. Okay, so even with my finger over it, I don't know where that went. Luckily, I have spares. Now we can just lift out this gear.
one screw, and that metal plate will free the gear and shaft we need to examine. Okay, let's just angle it out and pull gently. Initially it looks okay, but as you can see, when I hold the gear I can spin the shaft. That shouldn't happen. That gear needs to turn with the shaft, so there's a small crack somewhere. Here, I've got a non-broken one that we're going to swap in. The bad gear is so loose, it slides right off. This one feels well attached, so let's try it out. Insert carefully, and push gently. A bit of lube while we're here. It's not pretty, but I'll work it into the gear shaft by moving the sled. Don't forget the top sled rail. Let's put the cover in place to hold down the gear shaft. Now for the flat gear. I actually found this little collar earlier, so let's push that into place. We can spin the gears to see if the sled moves properly. Yep, it's working. Hopefully this fixes the issue.
OK, let's get it back together. First, this flex cable. Hold it in place and close the latch. Once that's in, we can put the board in place. We'll need to get it under some tabs and align that negative battery terminal. Looks like part of the negative terminal will sit inside the plastic piece. So let's get the negative terminal in place and then clip in the plastic part. There. Now we can take care of the rest of the board. Get it under a few of these tabs. One screw on the board. Let's put that piece of tape back. These side screws will take care of holding the board down. There, the other two screw holes you see will be for the bottom case later. Don't forget the small flex cable. Let's start with the battery contact side. Looks good. Two corner screws inside the tray area.
Now free the eject slider and mechanism. Drop the mechanism in with the slider back. The one screw will hold it down. Last one in the tray area. Quick lens clean. Oops, tiny hair. Let's remove that. Now flex this gently and line it up with the tab's pins. Move the arm outward so it can hook onto the tray properly. This side has a small hook that should be okay. Put the lid on with the latch side facing the eject slider. Line up the tab first, then three screws. Battery door, then the last two screws. Let's test and see if it works after replacing the gear. It didn't get past talk read last time, and it sounded horrible. This time it's nice and quiet. And it's working. Skipping around works fine. Sounds great. Looks like it was just a broken gear. Unfortunately, that's quite common with these old sharp devices.
this is a nice little setup that was a quick fix thanks to a spare gear. As always, thanks for watching.